have listened to ba uh, Bangladesh story a few times. And as we just discussed uh, b before Mr. Nazrul Islam joined, that it, Bangladesh was voted in the Asia region as representing the best practice in Asia region, as Kenya is represented in Africa to be representing. And they indeed have been also recognized by the United Nations. So clearly you've seen the best practice from one region. I think it's fair to say that when it comes to Pacific and Caribbean, uh, you are ahead of, uh, or you will be ahead uh, of everyone else shortly. So with that said, it is an enormous pleasure for me to introduce Mr. Nazrul Islam, who is the former secretary, uh, uh, permanent secretary in the government of Bangladesh, was in the cabinet division in charge of administrative reforms with a very distinguished career. And what made him stand out was, and he, remember I said these things happen when you have an evangelist, someone who's committed beyond the narrow designation and duties. And Mr. Nazrul Islam was one such officer of the Bangladesh government who, who really was dedicated to making sure this works. And it, it is the strong foundation that he laid and with his persuasive powers. And during the time he was there, he created a system which continues today and is now recognized as the best practice. So there could be no one better than Mr. Nazrul Islam. He is speaking to us from Dhaka in Bangladesh. And Sanjana, who has been working with me on a case study on Bangladesh, is in London and will also help uh, Mr. Nazrul Islam because Mr. Nazrul Islam recently was suffering from COVID and has not been fully up to speed. So we, so we thought Sanjana will, will do some of the factual stuff, but we will request Mr. Nazrul Islam to start by telling us how did this all start, Mr. Islam, and, and some of the context, and we will ask you questions. So what we will do is we will have an uninterrupted uh, presentation by Mr. Nazrul Islam, who will decide when uh, Sanjana will come in. And then after that, we will have time to ask questions. But when you finish it, we, people should note their questions and then we can ask in one go. Maybe that's the usual way of doing it. Mr. Nazrul Islam, the floor is all yours. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the uh, very kind words. Uh, it's really an opportunity for me to share our uh, little experience with uh, our friends uh, in Barbados and also in uh, your presence. I think uh, Sanjana uh, may uh, uh, start the presentation and uh, I will be in touch with her and uh, 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 in specific areas I will be intervening. Sanjana, may you please start the presentation? Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, so this is the outline of uh, today's presentation. Uh, we will start with some background and how the uh, uh, annual agreement, uh, performance agreement uh, in Bangladesh evolved over time. And then we'll go through the structure, preparation, monitoring and evaluation cycles and institutional arrangement, legal foundation, communication strategy, incentive and benefits and challenges. And we'll end with a regional comparison. Um, so annual performance agreement, which is more commonly known as APA in Bangladesh. So what is it? It is essentially an agreement between a principal and an agent. And it outlines the results that a ministry or division is expected to achieve during the fiscal year. And crucially, it provides the ex ante performance indicators and targets to measure progress in implementing these agreed objectives. I will now uh, request Mr. Nazrul Islam to give us a background of the APA because he was uh, heavily involved with it. Uh, Mr. Nazrul Islam. Okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Sarjana. Uh, uh, thank you very much. Uh, again, I, I would like to welcome our participants uh, from Barbados. Uh, uh, as I mentioned, it's uh, really an opportunity for me. So uh, going to the background, uh, uh, 
I must mention here that the government of Bangladesh uh, in, in 1996 uh, formed a committee uh, uh, that called uh, we called it Public Administration Refor Reforms Commission. Sorry, it, it was a commission. So uh, this commission was responsible for uh, recommendation of uh, 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 recommendation uh, for uh, improvement in governance in, uh, in in public administration reforms in public administration. So. Uh, 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 that uh, commission uh, uh, reported for the first time that they uh, recommended for a, a modern performance management system in uh, the government. But unfortunately, the, uh, the, the, in, the in the change of the uh, due to the change of the uh, uh, government, uh, uh, the political authority uh, it, it did not uh, proceed further uh, at that time. So again, in 2011, uh, in the sixth five-year plan, it was uh, mentioned that uh, we should have a, a strong uh, performance management system uh, in the government. Uh, and in 2012, the national integrated strategy, uh, uh, which was based on uh, the uh, United Nations uh, Convention Against Corruption, so that was a strategy and that uh, outlined the need of uh, this uh, uh, performance management system. Uh, but uh, still then it, never, it did not happen. Uh, here uh, it is not mentioned, but I must uh, mention here that in, in between 12 and 14, there was an event in uh, uh, Delhi uh, under the leadership of uh, Dr. Trivedi. There was a, a two week long uh, workshop in uh, Hotel Taj Mahal of Delhi. Uh, 35 countries across the world joined that workshop. And still I remember uh, Dr. Trivedi could inspire all the participants there uh, from Bangladesh to participants to uh, senior government officials joined that workshop. They were so impressed that after the workshop, they met Dr. Tibidi and uh, committed that they are uh, they were interested to introduce this system in Bangladesh. They will be trying to convince the political authority. Later on, they could keep their words. They could convince the political authority, and uh, with the help of uh, Dr. Tibidi. The, uh, it was introduced in Bangladesh. Before that, in 2014, uh, the, the uh, meeting of the SARP cabinet secretaries, SARP stands for South Asian uh, Regional Cooperation, Association for Regional Cooperation. So uh, in that meeting, the cabinet secretary also uh, decided that uh, uh, particularly the Indian representative uh, requested that uh, they have done a very good job uh, in this area under the leadership of Dr. Tribedi. So they want to support other countries. Bangladesh took this support and it was introduced uh, in uh, 2015. Actually, it was the financial year of 2014 and 15. So uh, at, the, uh, at the end, at the fair end of the financial year that was introduced on a trial basis. Uh, uh, Sanjana, uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, 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 as I mentioned, in 2014-15 uh, financial year, the APA was introduced at, at 48 ministry divisions on a trial basis. There was a, a strong debate that uh, uh, a, a good number of senior bureaucrats told that uh, before this training, uh, we need a, uh, need a huge training program before introducing this. But it was the interest of the Honorable Prime Minister. She, being informed by the Cabinet Secretary, she said that let us go for a trial basis. Then it was started there. This is the actual history of starting. The structure of India's result framework, RFT, was followed then. Uh, that, that, uh, at that time, there was no time for translation in Bang Bangla. So it was in English uh, uh, in line with the RFT of India. So in the following year, the APAs were prepared electronically in, in Bangla. 
So the score of mandatory strategic objectives was increased from 13 to 15. In India, it was 13 then, uh, it was made 15, uh, the mandatory objectives. And the expert pools in uh, ministries, divisions, and district committees on performance management were uh, there. So it was, it was uh, uh, created in the, in, the, in the ministries. And in the following year, uh, the score of mandatory strategic objectives were increased from 15 to 20. And uh, uh, four more ministries were, uh, uh, were, were included in this with uh, 48, now it is 52. Uh, and AP was rolled out in the Divisional Commissioner's Office. Divisional is the next uh, administrative unit uh, uh, after the, uh, the national uh, structure. So in, in, in the following year, reserve-based performance management was enshrined in government service in uh, act in November 2018. It was a, a tremendous development, inclusion in the Act, and the score of mandatory strategic objectives was increased from 20 to 25. Uh, it was uh, decided to publish the result uh, 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 composite scores. Uh, gradually, uh, uh, from uh, uh, since uh, 2014, uh, it is getting momentum uh, every year, and in, in the coming year, uh, I learned that uh, the uh, uh, weightage of uh, the uh, mandatory strategic objectives will be uh, 30. It is meant for, uh, uh, for uh, emphasizing on service delivery, uh, actually. Uh, so uh, maybe the next slide. Uh, 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 yes, uh, now it is in 52 ministries and divisions, uh, 344 departments. Uh, uh, around uh, 17,076 entities in total. Uh, actually, uh, it was it was in the ministry level first, then in the department level, and then uh, uh, in the divisional level, and now it is in the field level also. So uh, almost all the government uh, agencies, the uh, administrative units, they are uh, following this uh, uh, structure and uh, uh, they are working on it. Uh, of course, uh, the rapid expansion created some challenges also. The government is trying to uh, address these challenges. So later on, I may continue. Uh, uh, over to Sanjana. Okay, uh, so uh, this is the structure that the APA follows. Um, it uh, has lots of similarities with RFD uh, because it was based on RFD. There's a preamble stating the purpose of APA and section two uh, where there is a clear line of sight between vision, mission, strategic objectives and functions. And section two um, uh, outlines the outcome and impact of the organization. And section three is the heart of the APA. Uh, this is where strategic objectives, priorities, activities, the indicators and targets are listed. And the annex includes the list of acronyms and the uh, um, description of the performance indicators, measurement methodology, etc. And finally, uh, the last annex includes um, um, requirement and dependency uh, uh, on other ministries and divisions. So if, uh, yeah, even though APA is based on RFD, Bangladesh uh, did some customization uh, of, of the APA. They switched around some sections. But the important thing to note is that all the elements of uh, CFR or commitment to result framework is present. And this is uh, an official translation of the section one um, of the APA. It shows like the vision, mission, strategic objectives and mandatory strategic objectives and functions. And this is also an example of the, sorry, um, of section two. Sanjana, um, you can just explain the mandatory objectives uh, to everyone because Mr. Yeah, I, I, I will do that uh, in, in a later slide. Sure. Yes. And this is a section two. And this is a section three, which is the main part of the APA. It has all the uh, 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 rates of the performance indicators and the uh, deviation from target on a five point scale. And uh, um, Annex 1 leads uh, uh, the acronyms, 
and uh, measurement methodology and uh, uh, um, and uh, description and data source. And this is the dependency on other divisions and, and ministries um, that is referred to uh, there to uh, deliver uh, what, what has been promised. And Bangladesh's uh, rating system um, ha has 75% uh, rate is now on the strategic objectives and the 25% is currently on the mandatory strategy objectives, as Mr. Nazrul Islam has uh, said. Uh, it has been changed over years, and the total rate is 100. And the mandatory strategic objectives are um, the uh, uh, are the uh, strategic objectives that all ministries and departments must deliver on. Uh, these are reviewed every year by the uh, government and they can be updated. New uh, objectives might be included and the objectives that has already been fulfilled might be taken out. This is constantly being reviewed every year. Uh, some of the examples of mandatory strategy objectives uh, here, for example, like implementation of national integrity strategy and right to information, uh, reverse redress system, and, uh, and you know, uh, uh, implementation of citizens' charter, etc. And Bangladesh uses the five-point scale with 100% uh, percent, um, from excellent to 60% to poor performance. And because Bangladesh uses the weight and the um, five-point scale, they are able to calculate a composite score. A raw score is calculated based on the achievement on the five-point scale. And then weighted score for each indicator is calculated based on the raw score and the weight. And finally, composite score is calculated by adding the weighted score of all indicators. And um, when the APA is uh, prepared, uh, APA draws from uh, different government policy and strategy documents and international uh, co commitments made, for example, the sustainable development goals. Uh, election manifesto of the government, the perspective plan, which is the long-term plan of the government, and the medium-term five-year plan, as well as ministry-specific policy and plans, and budget and medium-term budgetary framework to ensure that APA is aligned with the budget. Uh, with budget. And the, this is the preparation cycle of the APA. So National Committee on Government Performance, they approve the guidance and issue the circular uh, and the preparation of a draft APA uh, begins. And these are then uh, reviewed by the cabinet division and their uh, in comments are incorporated. Following that, the technical committee on government performance, they review it and their feedback is incorporated. Finally, when the national committee approves it, uh, the APA signing ceremony mm -hmm. is held. And uh, then uh, after the signing uh, is uh, done, then the APS are uploaded on the websites. And this is uh, like a signing ceremony, the uh, pictures of signing ceremony where uh, uh, it is held in presence of the prime minister, which is very important. Uh, we all know that the uh, uh, commitment from the top leadership is very important and her presence is really uh, also the visibility of that commitment is also important. So uh, uh, everyone takes it very seriously uh, that uh, the APA uh, is a very serious exercise. And uh, Bangladesh uh, uses uh, now the electronic um, system to uh, to prepare those APAs. Um, this system ha has been customized, developed and customized for Bangladesh. So uh, officials are able to produce it in, uh, in Bengali. And uh, there are video tutorials and trainings and helps available in, uh, for, for, the, um, uh, for the teams uh, so that they can prepare it. And um, following the uh, preparation and approval of the APA, then the monitoring and evaluation cycle uh, begins. And there are uh, quarterly reports are prepared 
and also a half yearly evaluation report and the final evaluation, annual re evaluation reports are prepared. They, uh, the quarterly reports are monitored by the APA teams and the budget uh, uh, management committees. And the half yearly report is reviewed by the expert pools in the ministries. And, uh, and, and the budget management committee as well. And cabinet division verifies, uh, what has been, uh, uh claimed in the, uh, half yearly report as achievement. And they can, uh, uh, provide feedback to the ministries and divisions. And this half yearly evaluation report is also, uh, submitted to the national, uh, committee. And, um, the five annual, uh, Annual uh, evaluation report is uh, also prepared at the end of the year, which also goes through the scrutiny of the expert pools and the cabinet division verifies it and the technical committee also reviews it. And then finally cabinet division uh, 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 submits it to the national committee after their approval, the results are presented to the prime minister. And for the past two years, these results are also published on the website. And uh, proper institutional arrangement is very critical for success of uh, GPMS. And in Bangladesh, uh, the cabinet division under prime minister uh, is responsible for implementing uh, APA. And uh, the ministries uh, signed their AP, uh, uh, APA with the cabinet secretary. And then the, uh, for, uh, uh, it, it, it cascades down to uh, director uh, agencies under the ministries and the, their subordinate offices. Um, as mentioned by Mr. Rajiv Islam, uh, Bangladesh has uh, enacted a, a, a law government service act 2018 and uh, section 19 and 20 of that uh, has made the result oriented performance management mandatory. Uh, there is some scope to strengthen the act by specifying APA as the, as the tool to, uh, uh, to, uh, for this, uh, results oriented performance management. But, uh, this is a very good start and, uh, compared to regional peers, Bangladesh is ahead in terms of having, uh, this legal foundation. And another kind of legality of the APA stems from the fact that uh, APA is a tool, uh, uh, the vehicle for implementing the sustainable development goals, which the government has signed up to. And, uh, so it is, uh, and, and sustainable goal is something that the government has to implement. And APA is, uh, as, uh, uh, since APA is the tool, so, uh, it is very important part of that. Um, government employs uh, several internal, external communication strategies. Internally, there are circular on guidance uh, and the timetable is issued at the beginning and even evaluation results are communicated to the ministries as well. And the APA signing ceremony gets uh, press coverage and the signed APA is uploaded on relevant ministries and divisions website where ordinary citizen and uh, journalists or like civil society think tanks, anyone can uh, take a look and uh, see what the government is doing and can uh, hold them accountable. And also uh, evaluation scores are uh, being published now. Um, so uh, in terms of incentives, uh, the top 10 performing ministries receive certificates from the prime minister, which is very prestigious. And in addition, the top three ministries also receive a trophy. And uh, the evaluation scores, uh, scores are published now. Um, this is a, a screenshot from the cabinet division website where the scores are published. This is in Bengali, but you, you can um, uh, get the sense that, you know, all, all the list of all the ministries and their uh, uh, and their corresponding schools are uploaded. However, uh, HR has not been linked with APA yet and as a result, there is no individual performance incentive available at the moment. Um, I will now request Mr. Nazrul Islam to take us through the benefits and challenges of having this uh, APA system in Bangladesh. Uh, uh, thank you, Sanjana. Uh, Sanjana, can you hear me? 
Yes, I can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah. Regarding benefits of uh, the annual performance agreement, uh, uh, I would like to mention here that it has actually increased the accountability and transparency. Uh, 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 if uh, everything uh, is uploaded in the website, official website of the uh, government, a uh, ministry's uh, uh, objectives, uh, its uh, activities, performance indicators, if everything is uh, uh, in the website and can be seen by any uh, people, uh, any citizen of the country, so that actually increases the accountability and transparency. Better service delivery is ensured. Uh, uh, I can uh, cite one example here. Uh, the uh, 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 our uh, uh, the, the organization uh, named the uh, as Sanjana was mentioning uh, information, the uh, right to information, the uh, right to information. The information commission was uh, working on it, and it's a uh, statutory body, but uh, it was not uh, getting momentum. Whenever it was included in the annual performance agreement, where uh, it was mandatory for all ministry divisions to uh, address these issues of uh, uh, this uh, right to information and uh, 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 mentioning uh, deploying one officer for addressing these issues, that it uh, started getting momentum. So in this way, uh, better service delivery. Uh, the uh, 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 Citizens Charter, it is now uh, can be seen in the website. If uh, a uh, citizen is not getting uh, service according to the commitment, uh, as mentioned in the Citizens Charter, he or she can lodge a complaint and the uh, uh, grievance status uh, mechanism it can be. So uh, uh, it uh, actually, uh, 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 the uh, citizens are getting benefit of this system. Uh, they can uh, uh, see uh, the performance of the government and uh, they can claim their uh, demands. Uh, in this way, the annual performance agreement is uh, benefiting. Uh, the people are uh, benefited from this system. Uh, uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Uh, uh, again, uh, uh, the, the, with, the, with these benefits, uh, there are some challenges also. Uh, we have marked that from the very beginning, uh, there is a uh, system that the people, the officers sometimes try to uh, uh, go for soft targeting. So it is a challenge, uh, but the cabinet division uh, officials are uh, uh, looking into this. Uh, so, uh, uh, so, so there are some preconditions. Uh, now they are uh, addressing these uh, issues, the soft targeting, and it is being reduced uh, day by day. With the experience and with the passage of time, it will be reduced. Uh, building organizational capacities, it is really a challenge. Uh, uh, with the passage of time and experience and exercise through exercise, it can be addressed. Uh, uh, generating baseline data, we have uh, uh, marked it uh, regarding uh, uh, implementing uh, during implementation of uh, uh, the uh, 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 the uh, 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 that is implementation of SDG. We were uh, we found that there are much uh, not much uh, baseline data are there. This is the case with. Uh, uh, annual performance agreement also. Uh, the linking APA with individual performance is another challenge. Uh, uh, it is uh, the government is trying. This year, uh, 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 yet uh, proper incentives mechanism is uh, not yet developed, but the government is trying uh, to do this. Uh, this year for the first time, uh, the uh, top performer uh, the one uh, ministry, the ICT division, uh, was in the list uh, uh, Sanjana show, has uh, shown uh, earlier. So uh, the secretary of that uh, division was, uh, uh, his service was extended for two years. He was about to retire and at that time, he, uh, uh, his uh, division scored the first. 
So, uh, 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 being the topper, the government for the first time recognized this with the extension of service for two years. So, our understanding is that the government will uh, soon uh, make it in a systematic way. The uh, uh, the APO will be linked with the individual performance. Uh, uh, full budget integration is not yet done. Uh, uh, this year, I learned that the uh, 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 finance secretary was in the last meeting and uh, there was some discussion with that, that it will be integrated with the with, with budget uh, and improving communication at the field level. As I mentioned earlier, rapid expansion created some challenges. Uh, not much communication, uh, uh, not uh, uh, proper training. So these are the challenges and the government has uh, is trying to address these challenges by uh, training programs and increasing people in the cabinet division to oversee these uh, issues. So uh, these are some challenges and government is aware of these challenges and, and trying to uh, address these challenges. Uh, Sanjana, may I uh, go to you, over to you, Sanjana. Thank you. Um, so, you know, uh, in the class, like we talk about that uh, generally accepted performance principle. So this is at a glance where Bangladesh APA stands uh, on those uh, uh, aspects. So uh, Bangladesh, uh, in terms of instrument and methodology and uh, whole of government coverage, and um, Bangladesh is doing very well, On as mentioned by Mr. Nazrul Islam, there are works to be done in areas of incentives, HR integration, and full budget integration. Um, the APA is currently, uh, as, as it is, it's fully costed, but the, still the um, the, 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 uh, it hasn't been uh, fully in integrated with the uh, uh, APA software. So uh, those uh, needs to be done. But otherwise, uh, Bangladesh is doing uh, well in uh, these kind of parameters uh, of generally accepted performance principles. And this is a short comparison of Bangladesh with regional peers, Bhutan and India. Of course, there are lots of similarities uh, between these countries. Uh, you know, the link extends to this evening after I rushed to sign in my... Um, so, uh, Bangladesh and Bhutan um, uh, um, performance agreements were based on India's RFD. So, there are some uh, similarities, but Bhutan and Bangladesh have actually gone further than India in improving theirs. And um, so Bangladesh is ahead of, um, say, Bhutan in areas of legal foundation and publishing the results. But Bhutan is ahead of Bangladesh in terms of full uh, budget and HR integration. And this is the peer evaluation that uh, Professor uh, Trivedi was talking about. Uh, that in our Asia regional workshop uh, of the of the participating countries and states, uh, Bangladesh was judged as the as having the best uh, uh, GPMS uh, 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 in uh, in Asia, and I will end here. Uh, we have some slides on how Bangladesh has incorporated sustainable development goals in APA because they have done it uh, very, really well. But uh, in the interest of time, I am not going through all the slides. Uh, a copy of this presentation will be available to you and you can take a, a look at it. Um, and I will now um, hand over to uh, Praja. Thank you for listening. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, uh, Sanjana and Mr. Islam. Thank you. As always, it's fascinating. And, uh, you know, no matter how many times you tell me the story, I always learn something new. It's just, uh, you know, it is incredible. Uh, and, that's, and that has been my experience with um, things that I have taught, economics, for instance. I still enjoy listening to an economics lecture because even though I've written a book in economics, I teach, there's some nuances. Uh, I think, and as an outsider listening to this, let me take the, the first set of questions uh, that may be in the minds of people. And, and, and thank you very much, uh, Sanjana, you did explain the mandatory indicators, but I think what is the purpose of mandatory indicators? 
And that's, uh, that remains, you know, you kind of define what, uh, that they are given this weightage. But why, what is different about mandatory indicators is the uh, issue. And Mr. Uh, Islam, would you like to sort of share with the people uh, what is the logic uh, of having mandatory indicators? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, I think uh, uh, you can explain better, but let me uh, say that mandatory objectives are uh, uh, mainly uh, related with uh, uh, service delivery, where uh, it is mandatory to, uh, uh, it is uniform to all the uh, uh, departments, all the ministries. Uh, you know, the, uh, the, a, a particular ministry has its own mandate its own activity area of activity so it, it will be doing uh, uh, their own function but across the government there should be some uh, issues uh, which will uh, cross-cutting issues across the government it will have to be so every ministry will have to be in line with that so this is the importance of the uh, uh, mandatory objectives it will be mandatory for all ministries divisions uh, for example uh, the right to information it is a cross-cutting issue across the government. Uh, for example, uh, the citizens' charter. <coughs> citizens' charter. Uh, it is all uh, equal to all, uh, having equal weightage to all ministries' divisions. The grievance redress system, same. So uh, this is the importance of mandatory objectives. Right. So, so in short, um, and I think uh, exactly what you said. It is something which everybody, it's mandatory. It's uh, dictated by the prime minister or the cabinet office in this case, so that you have no choice. 15% out of 100 will be devoted to this because it is in the larger public interest. Uh, you know, every, everything we do in government is in public interest, but this is in the collective interest uh, that right. everybody must have a citizen's charter. It does not help to have one department having citizen's charter, the other not, because it's uh, common sense that we are here to serve the citizens. And, and as even the hon Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, Mia Motley mentioned that uh, service is very important. And so maybe this is a tool that one could think of it. Uh, be, you know, you could have a service, you could say, what's the purpose? Well, you know, as I mentioned, in India's Citizens Charter was agreed in 1997, but nobody was paying any attention to it till it was included in the RFD. And suddenly uh, everybody started paying attention, uh, things improved dramatically. So I think that is the purpose of this thing, that it's not that it's something new, but it's, it's required for everyone to do. And, uh, and then it's mandatory in the sense you have no choice. So those are some of the ways to think about it. Miss Cheryl Morris, Skeet. Yes, Miss Morris, you can. Good morning, good, good Professor. Morning. Good morning, colleagues. Yes. Good morning, presenter. I came in at the point when the presenter was speaking about the challenges that he was having and I didn't hear what he had mentioned in return in terms of reducing soft targets. So I just want to know what he's doing to reduce that soft targets, what um, plans he's putting in place to address that particular challenge. Right. <laughs> Uh, uh, should I? Uh, yeah, you want to? Yes, uh, Mr. Sam, the yeah, floor okay, is yours. Okay, you want to put okay, that stream, okay, uh, uh, that okay, particular okay, thing, okay, uh, Sanjana? Yeah, yeah. Okay. okay. So that uh, everybody can see which one. Uh, the point okay, is clear, uh, I think, that uh, there are challenges, and this is one of the main challenges. And Ms. Morris is saying <laughs> that what specific steps could one take to reduce soft uh, targeting? Yes, uh, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, for example, uh, soft targeting means the uh, 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 mentioning the target uh, uh, below the capacity uh, of that uh, agency or the ministry. For example, the uh, Ministry of Roads and Highways, uh, it was doing very well, uh, 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 expanding the uh, uh, roads, uh, repairing everything. So 
to uh, to to achieve the target uh, easily uh, that can uh, that can mention that uh, uh, if it has the capacity of uh, expanding 100 uh, uh, kilometers road uh, on in in a particular year to be in the safe side it can mention 50 miles 50 kilometers it can mention so in this way that they can show their uh, soft targets uh, so so that uh, they can score uh, the best score they can achieve but uh, to uh, in the beginning years uh, some uh, officials were doing this but later on uh, it was uh, told that please give your historic data what have you done during the last three years to having their capacity and uh, uh, and what is mentioned in the uh, now in the sdg or in the five year plan or uh, uh, in the uh, perspective plan what are the targets there and within the particular year you will have to reach at that level to reach that level what you should do in a particular year so in this uh, uh, cross examinations and uh, observing the issues from different corners now these uh, uh, challenges are being uh, addressed that uh, now it cannot easily if it could uh, if it could expand 100 kilometers last year why uh, when a 50 uh, kilometers this year they, they will have to answer so uh, now it is being uh, addressed in that way uh, they will have to explain uh, their their targets uh, with historic data and other uh, uh, related issues in that way the government is addressing this right. i think that yeah, yeah uh, may i just yeah. add to mr nazrul islam points on also there are expert pools at the ministries who are former um, government officials like secretaries senior secretaries and they also uh, uh vet the targets to be and because they have already have a uh, inside knowledge of the government and so they are able to detect any soft targeting also the finance division can also uh, very helpful because finance finance division has kind of like overarching view and they know like how much uh, you know uh, budget is required to do certain activities and so they can uh, you know uh, because it's linked with the medium term budgetary framework so they uh they can also question like you know um uh, why is that uh, uh you need uh, uh you, you need the uh, full budget but you are not delivering uh the uh, you know you are you are delivering less because they have data that be, and they know like uh, they are kind of how much bang uh, they can get out of the buck thank you and if i may just add to uh, from my experience in addition to everything that has been said by mr islam and sanjana uh, the transparency is another very important part of it the fact that everybody can see it the peers you know people who have already worked in that ministry and uh, others including the newspapers have uh, have a full right to say this is below capacity this was being done 10 years back and how come you are doing uh, giving a target below this thing so i think transparency itself prevents soft targeting and also uh, having a much more in depth um, look at some of this by some agencies i mean you can't do this thing for every target every year but as i said in our case in india the cabinet secretary said take a random sample of a, some departments and do a thorough investigation Uh, and you know examination of how everything was done including the data that was uh, provided not just the target but achievements sometimes the achievements can be also uh, dubious let's put it this way so one has to be though i must say that in my years in five years in the government we didn't come across there was only one such allegation and that was examined and it was found to be okay because people at that level do not give wrong information deliberately if it happens it's uh, without but we'll come to many other interesting question but uh, mr drake and then uh, mr dr chartman good morning all uh, thank you professor thank you um let me first compliment um bangladesh and, and the two presenters on on this um i don't just call it a presentation i call it an existing and a fluid um positive 
uh, program that is running. Uh, and so it makes it very real for us. Um, I have a couple of questions. I don't know if we're getting all, but I would say um, one of the things I wanted to find out is I heard about the incentives uh, I'm running the comparison to Kenya and um, are they find out what type if there are any type of sanctions for persons, you know, not meeting these, especially the mandatory aspect, um, if that is one. Um, and that's, we all know we, we're here to serve the public. And I, I noticed the, I didn't see anything about a challenge in terms of the public's perception. How, how, how have they in, in Bangladesh seen the public's view on that the government is meeting the demands on the promises that are made, you know, that's that's the only bottom line. So I, I will stop there to get some discussion on those. Thank you, uh, Mr. Islam. Uh, 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 can I uh, have the, uh, uh, the first question? Uh, uh, could you please uh, mention the first question again? The second question is clear to me, public perception. I will uh, talk on this. Uh, and, and the first uh, uh, question, can so, you please? In regards to, you talk about incentives are offered where you get a trophy from the prime minister. When ministries or departments don't meet deadlines, what type of sanctions, if any, uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you, uh, thank you. Yeah, you have rightly pointed out. Uh, actually, uh, uh, though, uh, uh, I must say that uh, still we are uh, learning from the system, from the experience. So, not much uh, sanction is not there. Uh, but uh, you know, in front of the prime minister, uh, 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 placing one ministry uh, in the lowest position or in the lowest. Uh, level so it itself is a uh, is a negative incentive to the to the uh, uh, person concerns but uh, uh, not uh, uh, it has not yet been done uh, any uh, structured sanction is not yet but maybe in future it may be introduced uh, regarding the uh, second uh, question public perception yes Oh, that's right. uh, we uh, have a very uh, strong uh, media in, in, in Bangladesh. We have a very uh, strong media. Uh, very recently, I uh, have seen one report in the ministry where they criticized the, uh, the performance of police. In a report, the, the police said that the, uh, the uh, uh, Minister of Home Affairs uh, they mentioned, uh, though it is a, uh, a previous report, that uh, last year they uh, received uh, uh, most of the targets they uh, received. So they, they, they criticized the uh, achievement that if it is so, uh, this uh, law and order situation not uh, should, should not be in, in such a position. So that was a very strong criticism. So what I want to make here, that uh, public can uh, observe this from the website of the government. They have their uh, ideas. Uh, they, they, in some cases, they are happy, but in some cases, you know, uh, they are not happy and uh, they uh, demand more. They uh, expect uh, more performance from the government. It is happening, but a strong media uh, is supporting this and they can uh, uh, criticize, they can uh, uh, mention the actual picture. So this is also uh, the learning for, uh, of, uh, for the government. They uh, the official concerns uh, pick up these reports and try to rectify themselves. So this is a, uh, I must say that uh, uh, people, uh, as it is a new system, people are interested with this, they are observing this, and uh, I should not say that in uh, all cases they are happy. In some cases, particularly uh, the web uh, publication, all activities of the government is being published in the website. In this sector, I must say they are happy, but in some cases they uh, may not be happy so much. Okay, so, uh, thanks a lot for that. Um, I will pass on to another one of my colleagues, Professor, at this time. Yeah, thank you, uh, Dr. Trotman. Thank you very much, and thank you for that excellent presentation. Um, I want to stay on the topic of, of incentives. <clears throat> we spoke about the the, <clears throat> the the issue, the use of trophies and certificates in order to incentivize ministries and departments um, to improve their performance. 
how do the incentives, how does that translate down to the lowest level within the organization in terms of, you know, that, that might be an incentive perhaps for the managers, for the heads of the departments, etc. But how do you, how, what kind of incentives can you translate that down to the, the ordinary workers, all of whom have to contribute to the level of performance that the department um, achieves? Yeah. Uh, 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 thank you. Uh, 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 thank you very much. Uh, it is the recent intervention of the government. Actually, it was not in the past. Uh, from uh, last year, the government uh, has thought about this, that uh, only three trophies or certificate is not enough. From now in onwards, from the last year, the all ministries are uh, requested to uh, provide incentive at least to one of their uh, departments performing uh, the best performers. So, uh, and, and also in the field level. So the government has started uh, incentivizing up to the field level from last year. Uh, it has not yet fully taken place, but uh, from this year or, or next it will be. Uh, and uh, you have rightly observed that the, the secretary getting one trophy or uh, a certificate, uh, what is the benefit of the grassroots level workers who contributed to this? So uh, it is uh, uh, the thought of the government uh, uh, from now and onwards, it will uh, be going up to the field level. Yeah. Thank you, Professor. Thank you very much. Ms. Titus. Hi, good morning. Good morning. My question has to do with the process. Now, you would have indicated that the process of the implementation of the APA, it started as a trial basis with 48, I think you said 48 ministries. What I need to find out is how long was that process? Because then you indicated that then additional ministries were added, which brought it to 52. So what I need to find out is how long was that trial period? And was it a situation where it was done incrementally? And how was that process? Uh, if I could uh, understood your question, uh, uh, the beginning was with 48 ministry divisions and then yeah. four uh, added, 52, and then later uh, it was uh, uh, expanded to the uh, departments under the ministries. And in these uh, subsequent years, it was uh, expanded to the, uh, up to the field level. So uh, this is the uh, structure and they generally, it is related to a financial year. The, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, APA is prepared uh, uh, at the, uh, before the financial year starts. Uh, at the, uh, maybe uh, our financial year starts in um, July. So it is being prepared from uh, maybe uh, uh, April, March, April, uh, uh, during March, April. And then uh, when it is fully prepared, uh, the uh, as you have seen the in presence of the uh, Honorable Prime Minister, the, uh, uh, the signing ceremony is there. So, uh, uh, is is it uh, uh, your, the, the answer of your question or you need more? <laughs> no, let, let me expand. You said it was done on a trial basis. Yeah, yeah. Right? Now, yeah. who came up, how was these ministries selected for the trial basis and yeah. how much... Um, Okay, you, you can probably answer that question first before yeah. I go into the other one. Yeah, okay, okay. Uh, uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned, uh, 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 I will go back to that uh, uh, workshop, the uh, workshop under uh, the leadership of Dr. Pajapati Trividi in uh, 2013 uh, in, in Delhi. So uh, learning from that, inspired, being inspired from that workshop, 
two senior government officials uh, from Bangladesh, they were, uh, uh, they were uh, trying to impress the government, the political authority. But uh, uh, the time was not, uh, uh, the, not so much time was there. At the end, fair end of the financial year, uh, there was a debate. Some senior brokers said that let us have an intensive training and let us start from the next year. But the Honorable Prime Minister was interested. Uh, he, she said that let us start this year as a trial basis. Actually, it was a full start, but to say to make it easy to to the to the uh, activists uh, to the to the officials, it said that uh, let uh, let it be a trial basis. So nothing will be uh, no action will be taking against you if you are uh, not doing very well. So it was the term trial basis only one year, but actually it was the full start. And the following year, it was uh, it has been uh, it was in a full start. So okay. uh, selection on 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 ministries were except the uh, the cabinet division who, who was uh, uh, doing this and the uh, uh, the the prime minister's office and also the our uh, another one or two ministries who are not very uh, conversant with this uh, that is uh, so okay. these four ministries were but uh, generally on all ministries were included there but in the following year uh, the the four ministries were also now. It is uh, uh, implemented by all the ministries, divisions of the government. Okay, I thank you because you answered the second part during your explanation. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Cyrus. Yes, good morning all. Uh, thank, thank you for the uh, comprehensive uh, presentation. Uh, my question query is around the sustainable development goals uh, I, I was very pleased that the uh, Bangladesh uh, actually using the APA as a tool uh, to implement the Sustainable Development Goals. I, I'm not aware if we had mentioned it uh, in the presentation with uh, uh, Kenya or even India. I, I, I'm not aware of that, but I, I think that that one is very, very interesting. Uh, I, 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 I don't think that in Barbados, I haven't heard a lot about uh, the Sustainable Development Goals and trying to incorporate uh, those goals uh, into uh, the work of the various ministries. Uh, so the, the question is, uh, was, this from, was this the incorporation of the Sustainable Development Goals uh, into the APA uh, from the beginning of their program? That's the question. Yeah, uh, thank you. Uh, uh, thank you. Maybe uh, Sanjana can uh, show one or two slides uh, regarding yeah. the incorporation of this. Uh, uh, but uh, let me answer here. Uh, uh, you know, the uh, Bangladesh uh, uh, did very well in implementation of MDG, uh, Millennium Development Goal. So uh, our Honorable Prime Minister uh, uh, got some international awards uh, 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 for uh, uh, successful implementation of MDGs. So that success inspired the government uh, to uh, implement SDG in the same way, the same way. So uh, the uh, government made uh, uh, some, some steps. One uh, senior uh, secretary was uh, uh, made the principal coordinator of uh, SDG implementation. So it is uh, continuing now, the another secretary too. So uh, that uh, the, the uh, coordinator, the principal coordinators and the uh, influential uh, agencies of the government thought that uh, uh, for proper implementation of uh, the uh, SDGs, it would be aligned with the uh, APA. So uh, the, uh, the, the activities of uh, uh, the, the uh, SDGs were aligned with uh, APA. Uh, it was maybe not from the beginning after uh, uh, SDG, my, uh, so far my knowledge goes uh, from the second uh, year of SDG implementation, uh, it was incorporated, uh, it was aligned with the, uh, with the APA. Yes. Right. Mr. Saris, uh, any other question on that? No, that's, that's fine. All right. Yeah. Mr. Thank Pedro you. Hutchinson, would you like to ask your question, a great question that you put on the chat? Uh, would you like to ask? Uh, 
sure, sure. Thank you, Professor. Yeah, thank you. Yes, um, in what we've learned this week is that uh, after the um, after the object, the priorities have been determined ex ante. Uh, we would then have evaluation at the end of the year, and uh, during the course of the year, uh, there would be little or no. Um, involvement, especially by the government, in the affairs of the ministries and departments and so forth. Uh, you reported that there are, there's a need for quarterly reporting. Uh, reports are pro provided on a quarterly basis. And I'm just wondering, what is the purpose of those reports? Uh, how detailed are they? How, how labor intensive are they to prepare? And um, what are they used for? What's the purpose of them? Uh, sir, uh, uh, should I answer? Sir? Yes, yes. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. You may, yeah. you may add, sir. <laughs> you, of course. Uh, no. Sir, it's okay. Sir, uh, to my understanding, uh, the, the quarterly reports are, quarterly reports are, uh, meant for uh, uh, monitoring. Monitoring meaning uh, if we keep everything for, for the end of the year, uh, it will not happen actually. So uh, what you are to do within this quarter, it is already mentioned. So have you done it uh, or if there uh, any adjustment is needed? So every ministry divisions are to report quarterly so that they are uh, on track. Uh, because uh, from the uh, field level experience, I have seen that if the report is not there, they will be busy with many things else. At the end, they will be trying to uh, report in a hurried way. So uh, the quarterly reports uh, contributes that, uh, yes, you have mentioned your priority. You will do this within this quarter. Have you done it or not? You will, uh, you will uh, let the authority know. So uh, I think it is of great importance for implementation and, and uh, to implement on time. This is my understanding. Sir, you right. may and So Mr. Hutchinson, it is true uh, that what Mr. Nazrul Islam said, but you have to put it, I think Mr. Hutchinson was saying that it would seem in theory and, in, and, and uh, makes common sense that if, if you're managing by results, you should not manage, when, you should not manage by processes and asking too many frequent questions on monitoring. That's the concern. But you see, it doesn't happen immediately, Mr. Hutchinson, because it takes a while for you to build a trust. I mean, you know, you can't say I've introduced a system, I'll withdraw all my old systems and I'll trust. So this, this, this is a transition. I mean, this, they've been there doing this for a few years. And so this is a transition. And, uh, and once you have the biggest problem with quarterly reports often has been that number one, uh, they were just a pro forma report on things, uh, but this one is different. It is towards an end. You, re you are absolutely sure what your end is because you have an annual performance agreement. And if you don't do well on that, it goes to the prime minister. So it is against something that you, you have really committed and you are serious. It's not uh, monitoring something and the uh, commitments are something else. So in a sense, it's a complementary tool and, and, and the government has to have enough experience, confidence uh, that it, this should not be required in the future from quarterly, they can go to uh, semi-annual. But I think this is a very realistic thing. Even in India, when it was introduced, we had to struggle hard to withdraw old system because people just continue to do the old old reports, old memos, old everything, because they don't want to take a chance because they will have to answer. So they say, let's continue to do. So in fact, to stop anything in government is probably as tough as to start anything. Stopping itself is like a, a major cultural thing in government. That look, uh, you have to answer to someone. If something happens, they'll say, look, this guy stopped the report and that's why this happened. So there are but you're right, it takes a while and I think it can't be done. Uh, but your observation is absolutely on the mark that what was the purpose of this thing? So let me just tie this with SMART. Now in SMART, we have reversed the process. 
and you know we haven't uh, started doing it because five days is not enough. But when you do it uh, in the real life, you will be able to put your input achievement. Let's say you are you uh, you have been asked to build uh, seven hundred kilometers of road. My favorite uh, example. Now you build ten kilometers of road on a uh, on one day. You could input that. But you don't have to now in smart, don't have to send a report because the prime minister or whoever is superior to you can see in the system and know where you are on that day. See, so the, the process has been reversed. One of the problems has been uh, sending the report. But in this case, there is no need for any paperwork or anything. You, the minute you do the 10 extra kilometers, you input it and uh, everybody can see that you're, uh, you've done 20 out of 700 uh, that month. So I think that is another way. But but to say that uh, you will do away with monitoring will not be reasonable because you do have to assure, you know, after all, we all have a fiduciary responsibility and we are the trustees of the people. And we can't say that we will well, wait till the very end. So I think that's kind of reasonable. Where do you draw the line and how much of this thing you do uh, will depend on how confident you are that system is now working as planned management by objectives and we can take it easy on the process control. So that cannot happen on day one. Right. So I would think that would be the way. There are some very good questions. Uh, Ms. Lord has asked the question in the chat box. What is the total number of ministries, uh, Mr. Nazrul Islam? Total? Uh, uh, sir, uh, it is uh, 52 in all. 52. 52. So everyone is covered. So that's, yes, I think, yeah. So for, uh, it's not that anything is left. Uh, Ms. Paris, would you like to ask your question? You have also had, uh, you can ask it much better than I can. Yes, good morning to everyone. I, my question was with um, to the special implication now we've found out that all 52 ministries being covered what was the resulting effect on government's financial performance since the implication, since the implementation? Uh, uh, would, you, would you please repeat uh, your question? Okay, Sorry. fine, no problem. Because we're saying that all 53 departments or ministries have been covered with the APA. So what was the resulting effect on the government's financial performance in all of these departments? Have been improvement or it still remains the same? I just want to get a bit clarified on that. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. If I could understand your uh, question correctly, uh, it has uh, uh, contributed a lot uh, in, in, in the uh, uh, improvement of financial performance. Uh, before introducing this, we have seen, as uh, uh, I worked uh, with the government closely, we have seen that uh, uh, at the uh, uh, end of the financial year, uh, many ministries uh, were uh, uh, refunding their money, uh, sending back to the uh, finance ministry that, uh, sorry, uh, I, I, I cannot uh, spend this money for due to these uh, uh, reasons and uh, all of all, all these uh, 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 reasons were there. They were uh, uh, sending back the uh, so that uh, and and at the same time there were some ministries who were, uh, uh, for example, education or uh, the uh, roads and highways. They were uh, taking the opportunity. The government was uh, uh, the, the uh, all the ministries were uh, that is. Uh, whatever may be the performance, but we have to uh, spend the money. That was the uh, standard ones. Let us spend the money. Otherwise, we will have to, uh, uh, they, uh, have to face the consequences or uh, answer it to the higher authority. So uh, some ministries uh, continuously, they fail to uh, spend the money. And the other some ministries, uh, particularly uh, at that time I was working with the Ministry of Education, they uh, took advanced uh, uh, projects, uh, tenders and everything. And at the fake end of the year, they uh, brought all send back money to them and uh, spend uh, in a hurried way. It was not the system actually. A uh, uh, lot of uh, uh, disturbances were there. 
So after uh, introducing this system, uh, as uh, we mentioned that quarterly reports are there, they will have to explain and uh, they have become cautious. And now I think uh, my understanding is that they, there is a uh, much improvement in financial performance. They are now uh, in line with the uh, rules and regulations. They try to perform uh, timely uh, so that uh, they are not to, uh, giving back the money. So this is uh, some sort of uh, improvement or achievement uh, in this area, I think. And I think, thank you. yeah, thank you, Ms. Paris. And thank it's you. worth uh, pointing out, um, you know, uh, because it's, it's very far away, so you may not uh, be hearing so much about Bangladesh that Bangladesh is right now considered to be a success story in Asia. It is the new Asian tiger. By any, any standards that you judge, Bangladesh is doing so well. Uh, and, you know, it's remarkable how well they have done. Uh, you know, you, people make comparison as you know the history that Bangladesh uh, was part of Pakistan and they split in 1971. And at that point, they were extremely uh, poor and their per capita income was low, their uh, industrialization, their exports. Today, it is a different story. Their GDP, et cetera, their per capita is higher than even Pakistan and their, their growth rate, their exports, by any standards that you, you compare, they are uh, considered to be a success story. And I think, I mean, Obviously, it's a somewhat biased view, but good governance has been an extremely important part of it. That right. the current prime minister is known for a very clean, accountable. You saw that she takes personal interest, sits in the meetings where these targets are being decided. It's not like hands off that someone else is doing it. She gets everybody to agree. Look, these, you know, you're agreeing in my presence. This, you know, I'm committed to this. So I think th there are lots of lessons uh, for leadership to learn from, uh, you know, the, the current prime minister. She is uh, an incredible leader. And also there are lessons to be learned on um, this creates an enabling environment. The entire government is kind of a little, you know, fine tuned and it's working like a fine tuned engine, so to speak. So it it helps in improving your uh, the ease of doing business index. It improves your export, the general environment. Uh, so I think there is this is the perception, and I'm not saying because Mr. Nasrul Islam is there, uh, you can see that Google and you'll find that Bangladesh is considered a success story for. And I think this has played an important role. That uh, it's a sign that you they're willing to adopt uh, avant-garde systems and take it to to logical and, and always willing to learn, uh, not saying that we've got all the answers. Even now they're very modest. I mean, Mr. Nazrul Islam is always, even now they're quite modest. Uh, and so thank you very much for, uh, that was an excellent question. There are some other uh, very good questions, um, but I would let, uh, let uh, request people to ask those questions, uh, including a question that uh, again, Mr. Hutchinson has asked, otherwise I was a great question on, on comparison with Bhutan, Mr. Hutchinson. And we will, but there is another one here. Uh, could you please uh, ask those questions because it's hard for me to read. Uh, I think uh, Ms. Best, would you, um, uh, this is Ms. Hunt. Yes, good morning. Good morning. Um, as an HR practitioner, yeah. I am beginning to get um, concerned that as I watch the videos and listen to the experiences given, that HR seemed to be the challenge, one of the greatest challenge in integrating into the agreements. And we too here in Barbados, we have the PRDS, which we will listen to later in the afternoon. Yes. Uh, we have also been experiencing um, being able to establish incentives for our in, um, for our employees. So I just wanted um, those persons, you know, you all to at least share with us. And I remember when you delivered on India, um, you too would have had that experience. I know Bangladesh. So I just want to hear from you guys 
um, as it relates to really what were your challenges, what, you know, just hit to us those challenges that you would experience so as to help persons like myself. Yeah. Well, uh, first, Mr. Nazrul Islam, then uh, the question, Mr. Islam, is <clears throat> that uh, it's okay at the organizational level, we've got the composite score. But how do we integrate this with uh, HR? I mean, to what extent and how is this, you know, so when you're evaluating the joint secretary or someone else, how is this, how does it play in and uh, where does all this fit in? That's the question. The integration of um, the composite score uh -huh. and annual performance agreement, which is at the organizational level, everyone understands. But I think people are asking how does it fit in the performance yeah. appraisal? Uh, yeah. Sir, actually, uh, this is an area we, we will have to uh, work out more. Uh, generally, when uh, the uh, score of the ministry is uh, higher, uh, generally uh, a, a respect is there that it's a team effort. Uh, all uh, of them uh, played uh, uh, together and uh, they achieved this uh, generally. But uh, to uh, identify the particular uh, officials, uh, we will have to uh, work it again. Uh, the, the, uh, so, so as I am not in the government uh, now, but I learned from my colleagues that they are working on it to identify uh, that, uh, as you mentioned, sir, uh, the, uh, the uh, score of the, uh, uh, that is the, uh, we call it uh, annual confidential report of an officer will not be higher uh, than the, uh, uh, the the percentage they got, the, the, their achievement. So these are the areas the ministry is also working in this area. Right. So, so Ms. Hunt, uh, there's nothing to be uh, very despondent or uh, feel uh, this thing. It's, it's, uh, it's, it is a tough area. But I assure you that when I was there for five years, before I started on performance management, the cabinet secretary called me very soon after joining and he said in, uh, that we need to figure out this performance related incentive scheme. In fact, as I mentioned, there were two reports, one, the administrative reform commission report, which said that we must have performance agreements. The second was the what we call the pay commission. So every 10 years or so, we have the central pay commission. And the sixth pay commission had also come out in 2008 and suggested that why has the government not implemented a performance related incentive scheme in spite of having assured and published in the Gazette that they will do it and they have not done it. So the, the current government was under pressure and I was given this charge and I will, uh, if you allow me, I will share a full presentation on the final after 10 rounds of committee of secretaries meeting back and forth with the Department of Personnel. The solution is there. My answer is it was the political will. Uh, the technical answer is very straightforward. And I think if I present it, you will say, yeah, that makes sense that this is how it can be linked to individual performance. And in fact, I have, uh, you know, there were some public enterprises, state-owned enterprises where this was done and has been done. But uh, so it, it, technically it is not a difficult thing, but you, it requires a little bit of political uh, guts to do this thing. And, and you know, this, uh, and I, I am sharing this story with you because, you know, I, I was lucky to be in the room uh, when these decisions were taken. So we come with the final, final report on how the performance related incentive scheme will work. The finance secretary, you know, secretary expenditure in our context, very important person. Uh, the secretary personnel, all on board, everybody on board. Once permanent secretary, when the report was being made said, what is the hurry? Why are we doing this thing? Why don't we let the seventh pay commission do this thing? See, this is the attitude. And it created uh, kind of confusion there. And I think there was a singular failure of leadership. The cabinet secretary listened and he said, yeah, maybe, you know, maybe we should let the seventh pay commission. There was a new cabinet secretary who didn't want to take the guts. Not the one which Mr. Nazrul Islam knows, Mr. Chandrasekhar. This was a new one who it was uh, just very, not very bold in, in everything. So, so I think the answer to me was lack of 
leadership and the and technically there is no reason and you will find and then the technical answer is straightforward and it can be done this the you know whether you have the guts and the leadership to do that and we will see the technical answer uh the last question uh, mr hutchinson and i think uh, sanjana if you can put the comparison of bhutan india and yeah. uh, bangladesh that slide and uh, mr hutchinson had a question on that and a good question so i i do want to uh, even though we are running a bit behind schedule but it's okay uh, sorry so the, the comparison between the yeah. yeah thank you yeah this one <laughs> Now, Mr. Hutchinson, your brilliant question, your good question. Uh, yes, um, Professor. This one was really for you. Yes, I I'm know. I'm not sure it is fair to ask um, Mr. Islam. No, no, it's But, for uh, me. That's why. That's why. Yes. I know. Yes, absolutely. It's not. I'm not going to pass the buck to him at all. Okay. Yeah. Yes, I was. I was recalling from our yeah. the presentation that uh, the. with um Bhutan early in the, yeah. the, the week yeah that they that that country had done extremely well yeah. or should i say very well yeah. uh, in all areas of the right. generally accepted yeah. um yeah performance principles right so so when i looked here at, at this particular comparison yeah uh, i was just wondering if it was an issue of timing yeah. the difference between this this assessment and and, yeah. and that one or or is it that there are two different different methodologies being adopted no i think uh, uh you know uh, and i think let's be specific you know bhutan i think um, the only uh, two things that i was generous because that was my rating and i was generous in saying they and i acknowledge they don't have a legal foundation but they have a strong tradition based on monarchy because if the monarchy says something it's an unwritten law kind of thing and that's perhaps because the king was favorably disposed to the system and uh, it was there so it continued even though strict legal foundation is not there so this is accurate uh, description and if you remember i said well for all practical purposes de facto it, it really the system continued from one prime minister to another prime minister because they followed a, a, a kind of unwritten law uh, over there which is the the law of monarchy so that was uh, there so i in fact if you go back and look at the video i have said they didn't have legal but i just sort of in a more generous way said but we can give them this this thing because the the de facto result was that continuity took place and uh, it's possible that in some countries you may have the law the, the government comes and uh, turns over that law or does something or uh, doesn't behave and so i think that this is a more uh, accurate uh, description because this comes from a case study where we had to be more accurate and that was like my editorial uh, view that it's okay we can be more generous and and do it but i think this would be more narrow uh, and more uh, legalistic uh, description of this thing similarly the uh, the results also they don't make a big deal of it but uh, they are known in the government because they try to link the performance of individuals with the departmental performance as the prime minister said so everybody gets to know but they don't kind of unlike uh, in uh, in other countries where they were published Uh, and they don't you know they have a tradition of being just humble and not r- rubbing it in your face but everybody knew because everybody knew their performance uh, why it was rated because the department was such and such so the information was there but it was with the royal Serv- civil service commission which was determining the connection between them and their performance appraisal so that's how and then again out of my love for bhutan i just said that's that's it's known but this is technically uh, it is this is the correct version that it's not published it's known but not published people get Thank to you. know yeah so that i think so so but since this is going to be published video it's okay it's, uh, you know it's uh, if you can be a little uh, lax but this i would go with this is the more accurate uh, version of that 
Okay. Um, thank you very much. This is uh, fascinating. We have we could go on, but I think, uh, Mr. Islam, I have no words to thank you. You're always, you know, the fact that you come and you continue to take interest and you're available to share your wisdom and knowledge. Uh, we consider you to be a part of the community of practitioners in the Commonwealth and we will go to you for for your wisdom and advice in the future. Thank you so much for coming. I wish we could uh, give you a big hand here because we haven't developed that technology as yet in Zoom, though we will have to give it a shot of how do we thank you. Thank you thank very you, much, sir. Mr. Islam. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you.